Welcome to today's DataVail webinar and thank you for attending. Today's webinar is titled Oracle Account Reconciliation Cloud Service and we are excited to have Todd Rebner, DataVail's Oracle EPM Global Practice Leader and Kelly Green, Director of EPM presenting today. Todd, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, I'd like to reiterate what Jane said. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Uh, we're very excited to discuss Oracle's Account Reconciliation Cloud Service, affectionately referred to uh, as ARCS, uh, here today. Uh, before doing that, I'd like to just uh, showcase a couple of things about DataVail. Uh, we are an Oracle Platinum partner, have been for many years, and we're very proud uh, to have a multitude of specializations, as you can see by the slide, across applications as well as industries. All right, so as far as account reconciliation, um, they, they obviously fill a, a very important role in ensuring the integrity of financial statements and making sure that they're reflective of the business at a particular point in time. <clears throat> Most organizations, whether private, public, uh, regardless of industry affiliation, go through a similar uh, staircase in order to close their uh, their books ultimately. And of course, throughout that process, an integral facet is the account reconciliation aspect. So you begin with things like closing your sub-ledgers, making your ARAP fixed assets uh, close. <clears throat> ultimately, the general ledger, you perform reconciliations and, and post accruals. Uh, ultimately, of course, from there, you want to continue to make sure that you've gathered and vetted all the proper information and data. Uh, data assurance could not be more important uh, than in financial closing consolidation, in my opinion. So obviously making sure that you've got a high degree of data integrity and that you've got a comprehensive and complete data set is of paramount importance. Uh, and then ultimately up through the consolidation process itself. Uh, this can obviously be done across a multitude of hierarchies, various types of vantage points within your business, depending upon how management or external bodies need to see your financials. Uh, and then, of course, the, the ultimate goal is to provide actionable, useful, relevant internal management reporting upon which better, better decisions can be made. Uh, and perhaps, depending upon the type of organization that you are, uh, external management reporting and filings with various types of oversight and or regulatory bodies. So very, very important process uh, for any organization uh, clearly, uh, you know, something that we all share uh, overall, but uh, many organizations do quite differently. In terms of account reconciliation, a lot of companies have this scheduled, uh, you know, precisely every month, every quarter, what, you know, depending upon your, your appetite or requirements from a, from a um, you know, re reconciliation perspective. And there's always quite a few failure points or potential failure points throughout the process, especially as a result of the fact that uh, often a lot of human intervention is involved. Um, sometimes there's not nearly as much automation in the account reconciliation process as is possible, which of course is one of the reasons why we're showcasing this Oracle technology to you today. And having said that, humans make mistakes, humans take, humans take vacation, they, they win the lottery, uh, they, they misplace things, they inaccurately manually key things, we're all human, we all make mistakes. So. Ultimately, you can have instances whereby you've got missing or lost reconciliations, accounts that simply have just been overlooked and they remain, they remain unreconciled. Uh, you've got improper usage of uh, certain roll forwards, uh, reconciliation of the incorrect balance. Uh, another area that, that seems to be quite common is insufficient justification or documentation uh, from an internal or external regulatory audit perspective. Uh, and of course, fundamentally, a, a weakness in internal controls, making sure that uh, the right people have access to the right information at the right time and that others do not, and that it's a, it's a well-documented, rigorous process um, that can you know, pass the sniff test of, of any type of uh, audit or regulatory uh, review. All right, so as far as Oracle. Uh, Oracle has a multitude of cloud applications today. Uh, we consider them cloud EPM, cloud ERP, things like that. Uh, the focus on this particular presentation, of course, as you know, is account reconciliation cloud service. But there are many other wonderful technologies that I would encourage you to take a look at uh, at a time and place of your choosing. 
Now, as far as ARCs, this product is really kind of taken off. A lot of organizations are seeing tremendous value, and they're starting to see an ROI that is uh, quite meaningful. And so we have been fortunate enough to have uh, quite a few of these projects under our belt and look forward to uh, many more. All right, as far as manual account reconciliations, many, many companies are still in this, in this bucket. Again, even very, very large companies. Account reconciliation is the number one non-data related delay in the financial close process. And that's a very meaningful, very powerful statement if you think about that. So setting data nuances and, and, and lack of data homogenization and accuracy aside, account reconciliation, the amount of time that it takes people and professionals to pre perform this process is the number one non-data quality related delay in the close process itself. So if you line up 100 controllers or assistant controllers, I would argue that 99% of them would always say, yes, we can do better on our close. We'd like to get faster on our close. We'd like a real-time close someday in the magic future. So this is an area where you really want to spend some time. This is a meaningful, meaningful obstacle uh, or impediment to a really fast close process. More than 60% of companies today are manually performing account reconciliations. Again, 60%. That's a large number of companies out there. In terms of best practices from an account reconciliation perspective, a lot of companies are, in fact, taking a look at this uh, and, and basically saying, look, what, what can we do better? Uh, you know, we need a software application. We need, you know, it's people process technology data. We've got to have good processes in place, good methodologies, a good framework that's repeatable. Uh, but we also need to leverage technology. It's 2017. We've got some, there's some fantastic options out there. Uh, and in my humble opinion, Oracle Account Reconciliation Cloud Service being the, the, the best, in my opinion. Uh, companies are asking for flexible balance mapping rules with an automated completeness check. Rule-based thresholds. You shouldn't have to physically go in and approve every single account reconciliation yourself. There should be tolerance thresholds that can be built in in an automated capacity uh, to carry your message forward programmatically. Workflow support. So if you need to delegate, if you need to uh, promote it for review to someone, you know, you've got to have that capacity to see, uh, you know, kind of how a bill becomes a, you know, how a bill becomes a law. Um, Similar to this, you need to have line of sight into the evolution of an account rec and, and how it gets from uh, the beginning to the various end, uh, to, to the very end whereby uh, you feel confident and comfortable that it has been done properly. Um, audit controls, very important. You obviously want to make sure that you're satisfying, at a minimum, the standards uh, provided by any external, internal regulatory or, or oversight agencies, uh, audits, things like that. And then, of course, reporting, monitoring, and analysis. There's, there's valuable information, very valuable information contained within proper account reconciliations. Um, so more, more time will be spent on that type of reporting, monitoring, and analysis versus uh, the, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears that are in, uh, involved in putting it together. All right, so in order to streamline your account reconciliation, um, this, this slide pretty much sums it up. The finance department is, in most organizations, you're under constant and increasing pressure to transform and streamline the financial close. We want it now. We want it accurate. I don't care who's on vacation. I don't care who's sick. We want it right now. We also want to make sure it's accurate. We want to make sure that it's bulletproof from a regulatory perspective. Um, and, of course, as part of that, Part and parcel is the account reconciliation process. So we need to be able to certify an account balance. We need to make sure that we've got the necessary transactional level detail uh, to satisfy audit control requirements, regulatory agencies, as mentioned earlier. And again, we want it done more quickly than it was done the month or quarter before. So that pressure is always, always there. Current economic situation. Um, as you can see here, we've got on the left a percentage of respondents citing issues that delay their, their financial close. And sure enough, at 26%, the highest is indeed account reconciliations. So it is a big deal. It's a big factor. It is kind of the long pole in the tent between uh, where you are today and a fast, more efficient, more accurate financial close process. And in addition to statutory pressure, 
Um, the current economic situation makes it imperative to make sure that you better understand the details and transactions behind every single individual account. Gone are the days where you can look over a thousand accounts or 500 accounts or 5,000 accounts and just because they reconcile not need to understand the transaction that support the ultimate balance. And a lot of executives even, uh, higher level folks within the organization are not satisfied without knowing the details themselves because the details themselves can tell a story. They need to be able to easily identify fraudulent or improper activity, um, of, of, which goes without saying, but in today's world, it's arguably more important than it has been in the past due to the ability of, of uh, you know, dark actors, uh, perhaps working in a, cyber, a cyber, uh, you know, cyber capacity. And of course, you've got to have robust application workflow, where, whereas by finance, finance and accounting professionals can work together collaboratively and not be, uh, not be dependent upon one another so, uh, so desperately and have greater visibility into, okay, when can I begin to add my value to this particular process instead of you know, emailing and you know, meetings and, and calls and things like that, you can be notified programmatically to let you know when it's your time to step up to the plate. As far as automated account reconciliation, most, and obviously you know, what does most mean, but most organizations perform hundreds, thousands of account reconciliations every month then. Uh, if you think about that, you know, over the course of 12 months, uh, it, that's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, you know, a lot of times you want to fully integrate the account reconciliation process into the financial close, but it's still kind of a disjointed one-off process. Even though you do it regularly and repeatedly, it's still kind of a one-off, you know, not truly integrated aspect of the financial close and consolidation process. They want workflow, where is it, right? Where are we in the process precisely? Not ambiguously, precisely, where are we in this process? Who is currently adding value or who should be adding value to this particular point in the account reconciliation process? And then lastly is, you know, life is too short, right? There are thresholds that you can programmatically or, you know, or formulaically enforce such that you're not painstakingly look at every single account balance and determining yourself whether or not it meets your tolerance threshold. So there are increasing ways by which we can automate the decision making and ultimately the reconciliation process without having to comb through every single account. So we want to efficiently manage the process. Most organizations, they've got nice calendars put together, they've got a team of very, very smart, talented professionals, but it's still very manually intensive. Uh, it also does not provide immediate instant visibility into the status or the progression or lack thereof of the, re of the reconciliation. You know, today with the pervasiveness of handheld devices, if I have an iPhone, I can see pretty much anything I want at any particular point in time, regardless of where I am. And organizations, especially management within organizations, are demanding that level of service. They want to know where are we precisely as of this very moment in time uh, right here while I'm standing and asking you it. And when you've got a process uh, like most organizations do around account reconciliation, for example, that's very human dependent, it is extremely difficult to get that top of the house look. You want to employ cloud-based solutions to efficiently staff the process, minimize infrastructure, minimize database uh, oversight administration. Make sure you've got the latest security patches. Take advantage of the fact that Oracle has a massive cyber security defense mechanism, whereas your company likely does not. Give access only to specific people. Make sure that the security protocols that should be enforced are enforced. And then, of course, use analytics to show how, how you've basically progressed, or lack thereof, uh, over, the, over the various months or quarters in the account reconciliation process. Where is there opportunity to reduce further human intervention, reduce duplication and triplication of effort, get information out more timely, provide greater analysis and uh, analytical capability? All of these types of things are being looked at very significantly and very seriously by organizations today. So, all right, so as far as Oracle Arc, it's a purpose-built solution in the cloud for managing the global account reconciliation process. It does truly give you real-time visibility into the reconciliations, where you are, where you are at a particular point in time, who, what, where, when, why, 
how. Um, and of course, Oracle puts it in a pure software as a service or SaaS model, almost like a cable bill, whereby you can essentially indicate how many users you need for what particular duration and consume that service uh, without any type of waste. Um, so ARCS is part of the Oracle Financial Close Suite. It's important to mention. Um, many companies are saying, hey, look, that's great if we improve in just our account reconciliation. We're going to see tremendous benefit as a result of doing that. We're going to improve and streamline our financial close. But let's expand upon that and look at some of the integral aspects that all that, that, that collectively com, you know, um, complete the picture that is an organization's financial closing consolidation process. And a lot of it is tax reporting uh, and also, of course, the orchestration of the financial close itself, of which the account reconciliation process is just a component of. So there are other modules, as, as evidenced by the earlier slide in the presentation, that Oracle has created that give you a more comprehensive solution, a right-sized solution for your organization in terms of financial closing consolidation. So what's included in ARPS? Um, you basically get everything you need in order to effectively and efficiently manage a global reconciliation process. You've got flexible balance mapping, automated completeness checking, rules-based thresholds that we've mentioned numerous times. You've got collaborative workflow, audit controls for every single activity, and then, of course, you've got robust monitoring and analysis. Uh, some of the key features that I, I'd like to mention uh, as we progress here uh, during this webinar towards the demonstration of the software is it's user friendly. It's got a nice user interface. The GUI is uh, doesn't is, is not off putting at all. Uh, it, it does auto reconcile um, depending upon the thresholds that you put forth very consistently and completely. Um, so you can have confidence that when you specify a particular threshold, it will be executed as it should be consistent consistently. Uh, it's very powerful in terms of its reporting and analysis capabilities highly configurable depending upon your environment, um, allows mapping to summarize low-level balances to the appropriate reconciliations, uh, and you can see that visually. And then, of course, it's got uh, some sexy dashboards and things like that that uh, typically folks within uh, operations or upper-level area of accounting and finance would like to see. So again, we encourage you to take a look at this product Learn how we can automate your reconciliations for sake of efficiency and compliance and sanity of your own you know, professionals. Integrate it with other ERP and enterprise performance management platforms. It doesn't have to be Oracle. It plays well with SAP. It plays well with Vaughn. It plays well with JD Edwards, things like that. Manage visibility into the progress of the reconciliation. Uh, be able to produce reports and respond to phone calls and emails with 100% confidence and precision and leverage Oracle's best practices that have been baked into the product uh, as it has continued to evolve. Um, from an overall perspective, this is a nice slide. It kind of shows you, if we were to, you know, to break it out into quadrants, you've got the integration component, collaboration and workflow, the, the fundamental bread and butter reconciliations themselves, and then the overall user experience. And it does a nice job of, of you know, really bringing out all of these aspects of the software in a way that is easy to use, is very powerful, is efficient, and produces uh, a finished product that uh, people can really uh, feel good about. Integration with ERP, um, we want to talk about data, metadata, you know, exchanges and things like that. It can be integrated, of course, in the Oracle Reconciliation Cloud Service. There's a product called Oracle Integration Cloud Service. There's also uh, various other types of mechanisms like Financial Data Quality Management Enterprise Edition and what have you by which we can harvest as well as produce uh, data and metadata. Um, it's a conversation that we can, uh, we'd, we'd very much welcome the opportunity to dive more deeply in uh, on a one-off basis. Uh, but there are indeed very robust bi-directional data and metadata options uh, within Oracle's Account Reconciliation Cloud Service module. Uh, one, of course, perhaps the most commonly used is what's called the data management module. Uh, it basically allows you to bring file-based CSV, TXT, XL, you know, uh, XML, what have you, from your ERP or other EPM system. Uh, obviously, as you would expect, you can 
uh, produce mappings, many to one, one to many, many to many, one to one, um, that can consistently be executed from source to target. Um, and of course, last but certainly not least, is the capability of doing drill through back to the source system to see perhaps uh, a greater degree of granularity of detail in order to feel comfortable about the summarized figure that's, that's in front of you. Uh, one thing I want to mention, of course, I, I, one more time, is cybersecurity. So every company's at risk, right? There are two types of companies, those that have been breached and those that do not yet realize that they've been breached. Uh, but I would say this. I would say that um, Oracle is spending an incredible amount of money on cyber intrusion prevention and keeping out bad actors. And I know that Oracle's cybersecurity budget is infinitely larger than 95% of all other companies in the world. And so I would argue that your data is safer in Oracle's data centers than it is within your own. For Oracle, a massive breach would be catastrophic to its fundamental business model. Whereas in your company, it would make the local news, it would be painful, no question. But Oracle, it would be, it would be a tremendous blow. And as a result of that, they are spending incredible amounts of money to keep the data safe. All right, with that, uh, one thing I would like to mention uh, before I turn it over to, to Kelly Green is the transition to the cloud does not have to be a painful nor expensive one. We have uh, purpose-built paths that you can take uh, that meet your budgetary restrictions, uh, your timelines, your critical to qualities, and we can cater to those specifically and uniquely for your company given the circumstances um, uh, presently in play. Um, so please do not hesitate to reach out and perhaps allow us to give you a complimentary value stream mapping or uh, cloud migration roadmap at no cost to you. And again, thank you very, very much for your time today. We are most grateful. Uh, with that, I would like to turn things over to Kelly Green for a live demonstration of uh, the Oracle Account Reconciliation Cloud Service product. Kelly, go ahead, please. Thank you, Todd. Today, we're going to be going through the Account Reconciliation Cloud System as discussed. First, we'll log on as Barry. Barry is our accountant who performs reconciliations. When you log in, you'll see a, a nice clean screen, this welcome area here is specific to the person logging in. So these are Barry's tasks for the month of April 2017. You can go there, you can click on these tiles also to get to your reconciliations. Uh, this looks like a phone for a reason because these uh, applications are automatically enabled for use on phones and tablets. Again, you can click on any of these that you wish to get you to the reconciliations area. Each of the fields can be sorted on quickly. We're going to start with the accounts payable trade account. There are two types of account reconciliations. The first is balance comparison that we'll be doing here. The other is account analysis that we will look at next. When you open a reconciliation, the first thing you'll see is the summary tab. The summary tab shows all the relevant information for the reconciliation. The account ID, the name, the description, which period you're in, what the process and account type are, as well as the format and the method. Custom attributes can be added in the other attributes section here. Instructions can be text or links or attachments. Um, these links can be both inside and outside of your environment. We'll come back to the balance summary in just a second. You can add attachments here. These are at the reconciliation level. So something that applies to the entire reconciliation, some Excel backup, a PDF can be attached right here. Comments can be added. Uh, comments are added with a timestamp and the user's name automatically, and these stay with the reconciliation for the entire period. So a 
conversation can be recorded between the preparer and the reviewer uh, to show how the resolution occurred. Questions are generally set up to reflect the account reconciliation policy of the company. So these questions can mimic your policy. They can have any other any other questions that you wish to ask of the preparer or the reviewer. They can be set to be required by the repair or the reviewer. And at the bottom, you'll see workflow. Right now, you'll see there's not someone in the preparer box because there's a team over here. Team, the team concept allows us to set up access to reconciliation for a group of people. This is especially beneficial to small departments like the accounts payable group or the accounts receivable group, um, but also in a shared services center where there may be a dozen or more accountants who are all responsible for all the reconciliations. The team concept allows us to set everyone up and then they can control who does each rec each month. And so there's Barry, who we are right now. So since Barry is the first person in here, Barry's going to go ahead and claim this rec. Now, this rec is now Barry's. No one else can work on it while Barry has it. Uh, sort of like a check-in, check-out process. You'll see that my questions are now no longer gray, and I can answer them as well. The balance summary is the most important part of reconciliation. This shows in a balance comparison our two balances, their difference, adjustments to each side, and our unexplained difference. If you click on these links, you can see what has made up those balances. And so this will open up the detail that was loaded through data integration to show you all the records in the file. So if your file was loaded by a company, an account, and department, it will show you all the departments that summarize to this company account level. So here you can see all of my transactions. To make an adjustment, you can can go to either of these two links or to these two tabs up here. Adjustments are comprised of transactions. Transactions are Oracle's term for reconciling items. So each reconciling item would be added in here. And when you add one, you get another set of fields to complete. Your uh, short description and the date and then you can have a close date if it's already been closed, long description, the impact. Um, and, and these fields with drop downs can be customized as well. So if your impact is more than balance sheet income statement, that can be changed. Uh, if you do amortization, uh, which we'll show in the next rec, you can do a full amortization table right in the system. And then you can choose your currency. You have the option to do attachments and comments here at the reconciliation, at the transaction level. And then you have an action plan. The action plan is optional, but it's a lot of really nice detail that shows what's going to be done about this reconciling item. And so in this case, they're going to do a journal entry. Here's the entry number with the description and the accounts that it hits. And again, you can have attachments and comments here to show the approval of that entry in the general ledger. You can also carry forward uh, attachments from prior periods, uh, transactions from prior periods. So if something were done in the month of March that we wanted to see in April, we could go ahead and bring that forward just by checking this box and hitting copy. And so now we have uh, additional details from the previous month. And we'll get rid of that one. All right. Oops. And then we can fill in all the required information, and save it. Now you see that we have an unexplained difference of zero. 
which is what we're looking for. We'll answer our questions appropriately, and then we'll submit the reconciliation. And so now that reconciliation has been uh, completed and is no longer within Barry's view. It is on to the reviewer. The next type of reconciliation we're going to look at is the account analysis. So the summary, attributes, instructions, questions are all the same, the same type of information. The balance summary is different now because we have a source system balance and then an explain balance and a difference. So in these, the full amount of the account must be explained each month. Again, we will claim this one. And in the prepay expenses, you'll see that we are using the amortization process. And so we're building our basic amortization table. And as we carry this forward each month, the amortization amount automatically calculates until the remaining periods are gone. And so that is those. Now, we can have, so those are Barry's information. Now we're going to go ahead and sign out, say goodbye to Barry, and we're going to come back in as Maria. And now Maria is the administrator, so she can see more. She can see all of the reconciliations. Uh, Maria also has uh, the best view of the dashboards because she has all. The dashboards are relative to the security of the person logging in, so Barry only would have been able to see his, but Maria can see them all. The dashboards are pre-built and available uh, as soon as you create your application. You can see here there are five different attributes that you can view dashboards by. So we recommend that one of them matches your financial statements, something like this, so that you could see when a financial statement item has been fully reconciled. You can click on any of these, the bar, the words, to see what is not done, or to see what makes up that detail, and then further investigate it. Uh, we, we also have a compliance dashboard that will show us. This can be used to help improve the process of reconciliations. This shows the on-time performance and rejections uh, either by user or by organizational unit, which is usually a, a location or a department. And so this can help focus additional resources or additional reviews upon uh, any area where there are issues in the reconciliation process. There are a number of reports that come pre-built. Uh, you have compliance reporting, which shows uh, some more issues. And then you also have reconciliation manager reporting, which can show reconciliations uh, with really any different set of attributes that you wish to see. Uh, it comes automatically checked, so uncheck them all, and then pick a report that you'd like to see, and then a format that you'd like to see it in, Excel, HTML, or PDF. So set your report, set your format, and then click Generate. Choose your period, and generate your report. And here you can see all the preparers with late reports and at what stage they're in. So, for example, Jacques is off the hook because all of Jacques have been prepared and are with the reviewer, or with Jacques to review. And all of these reports also come pre-built from Oracle. Uh, if we go out, we can do a review real quick. We'll become George. So 
So George is a reviewer. And so we're going to go ahead and review the accounts payable account that we did previously. We can see it's zero. Take a look at the comment. We see that Carol couldn't find the three million, but it looks like Barry found it. There it is. That all looks great to me. And so if there are no questions, you know, a comment can be added here. Uh, once it's claimed. So a comment can be added. Um, we can put that in there so they can all see it next month when they get ready to work on this and then we're going to go ahead and approve the reconciliation if you reject the reconciliation it goes back to the preparer uh, along with an email notification letting them know that they have an, an additional reconciliation to look on and here is a view of george's world where everything is complete All right, back in as Maria. So we've gone through the reconciliation process, seen what the users see, uh, some reports, some dashboards, the actual reconciliations. Uh, one key difference in the Oracle account reconciliation package is the data integration. And so this module allows you to import any, any flat file from any source to show that you have, to allow you to map your data into your reconciliations as necessary. Uh, this can be automated and it can be easily set up to, you can bring in subledger data, like AP data, inventory data, fixed asset data, um, anything that you're currently dumping into Excel in a manual process can be loaded through here. And you'll see we have source. So the source account goes to this profile, the two that we looked at. Uh, and then you can do things here. Uh, you have mapping that you can do. So if you are want to combine multiple accounts into a single reconciliation, this is where you do that. If you want to combine all of the legal entities for a single account into one reconciliation, this is where you would do that. And this also is what is going to help show that data has come in that would require a new reconciliation. Sometimes that is missed in the manual version of account reconciliations, but here the system checks uh, all the general ledger balances that come across to make sure that they either have a reconciliation or it will produce an error that causes you to create a new reconciliation. Another feature that I like a lot in this is uh, for auditing there's a process called a report binder and this allows you to when the auditors come in and want to see the details of your reconciliation instead of going through a file cabinet or searching through hundreds if not thousands of excel files you can generate the report right from the system of whatever the auditors require so the auditors come in, you give them your list of your 937 recs. They pick their 10 they want to see. And then you go to generate report binder. And what you can do here, you can include your attachments and you can include your transaction detail. And so this is going to provide all the details of all the account reconciliations that have been selected. All of the entries, all of the reconciling items, all the attachments, all the comments, timestamps, user IDs in a zip file that you can just email to your auditors. And then they can open it up.
and they get this nice HTML index page so they can go through and say, oh, yep, those are the ones I picked. Let's see what happened here. And it opens uh, this. It looks just like the summary page that we saw before uh, with even some more detail and all of the history of everything that happened. So that's a really simple way to get your account reconciliation information over to your auditors. Now, we've gone through some of the basics. Uh, there are additional features that can be set up uh, by the administrator. And so the biggest is going to be uh, the auto reconciliation process. So in one of these, uh, they're called profiles. That's a reconciliation without data. This is where we set all the all the attributes, build custom attributes. Auto reconciliation, there are a number of different methods of doing so for both balance comparison and account analysis. And so you can use those things like if it matches, if it's the balance is zero, if it's zero and there's no activity, or if it's within a tolerance, either a number or a percent. So those can be used. Well, we've had a lot of success implementing those for companies up to about a 60% auto reconciliation rate. So that allows, by implementing auto reconciliation, you can create more recs than you have today to get that completeness of the general ledger without the possibility of missing anything that comes through, but without increasing the resources required to do all of those extra reconciliations. And auditors really like that. You also have the ability to create rules, and the rules will let you do more advanced auto reconciliation. Um, they, uh, you can actually do anything that you can do in the system with rules, uh, but one of the things you can do is that you can use a materiality check and say, if the account balance is not over X amount, go ahead and auto reconcile it because it's not meeting your materiality. So if there's anything like that that you'd like to apply to your system, it can be done through rules. This is where we add all, all of our instructions, uh, the workflow. You can set a backup for each user as well as teams, uh, reviewers. You can have up to 10 reviewers and a backup for each one. Now you don't uh, attributes like I mentioned. You can do unlimited an unlimited number of attributes. They can be displayed or not displayed. Uh, they can be yes, no, true, false, a list that you create yourself, numbers, text, uh, a lot of different options you have there. Um, the system also does currency. You have to load the balances translated in the different currencies, but then you can enter reconciling items in a single currency and the system will translate it into all the other currencies for that reconciliation. Uh, if people are sick, they can be, uh, if someone is sick or out on vacation or out on leave, any reconciliation that is open can be assigned to other people on the fly. And this can be done by the administrator or by the reviewer, and basically anybody with proper security, and it can be reassigned at any time. So, and that's it. About three seconds to reassign it. And now reassigning a reconciliation does not change who was originally assigned to it. So next month, that person will be back. It's especially helpful if someone's out on temporary leave or if they're just sick or on vacation for one month, you don't have to change the system. You just make an, an exception for that period. Uh, so with uh, then the academy, this is a common theme throughout the Oracle Cloud offerings is there are videos and documentation for all aspects of the system. And they're in little bite-sized chunks so that people can go and review them as needed. Uh, it works for users, it works for administrators, and so these are very helpful. These are created and maintained by Oracle, and so they're always up to date, and they always are uh, very robust, nicely produced videos and documentation. And so with that, uh, it concludes our demonstration today. 
thank you for joining. Thanks, Todd. We really appreciate you and Kelly taking the time to share your expertise with us. And thank you to all our attendees. If you have any questions about DataVail and our EPM health checks, assessments, cloud support services, or operational support, please visit DataVail at www.datavail.com or contact us at 866-583-3788. We look forward to helping you manage your data and applications so you can manage your business.